I wanted to put a quick video up because the more FAs I talk to, the more aware I am becoming that on one of the fundamental tools that's used by almost every single firm, uh, there are some embedded issues that have thus far worked out really in the client's favor. But if and when this market goes the other way, they're going to be somewhat devastating. So I'd like to walk you through it and have you check in your own planning tools to see if this is not the case. At a high level, you should know this. Every time you do a cash flow projection using some form of financial planning tool, it's going to have a tax impact. Almost to the letter, every single one of these that I've reviewed defaults a portfolio turnover rate at 100% annually. Just think about that for a second. If you have an 8% return you're projecting in equities, that return is going to be subjected to an ordinary income rate each and every year. As a result of doing that, what ends up happening is we have a completely false projection built in to the client's financial plan. This is one of those things, if I ever wrote a book, the title of the book would be If the Public Only Knew. Because as you think this through, it's pretty frightening. So let's look at something with no tax impact at all. Client wants to accumulate $12 million over, let's say, an 18 or 19 year period. And it looks like about a six and a quarter percent return will get them there. 8.5% assumption for equities, half means four and a quarter. 4% assumption for fixed, I know, too high. It nets to 6.25%. Then we just roll this forward, and that's kind of what the plan does in its simplest format. However, it starts to do a few other things. We're going to leave inflation out of it. And we're also going to leave taxes on fixed income out of it for now, just to get this point across. What the plan's going to do is it's going to make believe that that 8.5% return is exposed to an ordinary income tax every single year, taking the 4.25% return pre-tax and turning it into a return, assuming a combined state and federal rate of 42% of 2.47%. As I said, I left this one alone. Here's 4.47. Now, in the previous illustration, we were pretty close to 12 million bucks. Well, now we're getting further away. We're at 8.788. So if the projection was still to get to 12 million and the client had this kind of time horizon, yeah, maybe you get a little bit more aggressive in equities. But look what it makes you do to try and make the numbers come out. Here's a higher exposure to risk. This one's showing at 75.25. 75% in equities takes us to a 6.38% overall from the 8.5. I apply the tax bracket, the, the plan is applying, 3.7. 4%, only 25% there is one. That takes me to 4.7. It still doesn't get me there. I'm still way short. Let's try something else. What if we made this more realistic and said, in an average year, we're only going to see 20% portfolio turnover. I think that's reasonable. Assume that's against an 8.5% return. That's going to basically have a net impact to reduce our 8.5 to 7.79, which I think is way more real world. Here, we take that at 50%, 389. Here's we're back at a lower asset allocation, 589, but a good tax effect, and we almost get home. So here is a 50-50 allocation, taxes applied correctly. I project 11.2. Here's a 75-25 with the nonsense taxes that get projected by these plans. By default, I'm only at 9.1, and I'm at 8.7 if I stay 50-50 according to the plan. So you make the adjustment, and you end up here, 589. Check in your plan settings. You can change them up to anything you want. The difference is it defaults to 100. They think it's conservative. I think it's nuts. Now, here's the good news. Assuming you were following your plan's guidance, which was vastly overstating the amount of exposure you needed to take, let's make believe that you plotted using a 70-30 return on those numbers we looked at before. Well, you still wouldn't get there according to the plan, but in the real world, look what happened. In the real world, you ended up, as of 223.22, or even the end of last year, you ended up with almost 30 million bucks. Why? Because you were so overweighted in equities. Yes, you rebalanced. That's awesome. That's great. 
But the reality is that these plans forced you to hold far more inequities than you ever needed to do at a time when the last 15 to 18 years was probably better than anything we're ever going to see in the rest of our lifetimes. S&P, 1141. TLT, bonds, 8.08. You're talking about returns that are dramatically better than you ever would have projected by between four, five, six, seven hundred 700 basis points. Do yourself a favor. More importantly, do the right thing for your clients. Rerun these numbers. Adjust the taxes. If you're showing a 99 percentile completion to goal with whatever allocation you have now, take that allocation back to, let's say, half your current equity exposure. Run it again. My bet is you'll still be at the 99 percentile. This is a conversation your clients will love to have once they understand it. At the end of that talk, it's a very simple question. Are you having these discussions with your other advisors as you discuss your goals? The answer is going to be uh, no. I think that money should be moved over here so we can keep an eye on it like we watch everything else. Guys, this is working with FAs I'm working with right now, and it's working well. Again, big problem, but let's fix it. You've got the time. Thanks.